Uh oh, what do we got here? What are we doing, Tim? I don't know, you want to tell them? No, not yet. Let's open this thing. All right. Just know this is about 115 pounds. Pretty okay. St pretty stout box. So if you hear Tim grunting, just know this thing weighs quite a bit. I can't believe things have escalated to this level, Tim. It's uh, happened pretty quick. Yeah. Let's just say uh, not really uh, playing around anymore. So you got an idea what's in here yet? I got an idea. About do the people. Yeah. Let's just set that aside. Comment below if you have an idea or if you got any thoughts on what this could be. Based on the weight, I would say it's probably pretty obvious. What we got in there? Looks like the top of a motor. No. Oh. Remember, lift with your legs, Tim. Oh, yeah. We're it's a shame go. you don't have a guy to give you a hand with this. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't ever get no <laughs> help around here. Where should we go with this? Toolbox? Yeah. Let's uh, cut in. Hold on a second. Oh, okay. Ugh. I was going to give you a hand, but... Yeah, I know how that goes. <laughs> I swear it wasn't just going to be me All clapping. Right. So, let's just say... Things have escalated. Things are getting a little crazy. What for who? You want to tell them what this is? It is a Stage 3 DNM motor. Okay. Tim will be able to fill you in with a little bit more of the specs here. So it's got uh, billet crank, uh, BC billet crank, it's got BC H-beam rods, it's got CP Carrillo pistons. Uh, I don't remember what valve work was done to it. Um, have to come back with the specs on this thing here shortly, but uh, Whose machine's it for? It's for Tim's machine. Uh-oh, what happened, Tim? It got away from me. <laughs> Let's just say uh, I warped the head. Yep, got a little bit too hot, ended up warping the head, and then things just kind of snowballed. It snowballed. It's going to just be a head gasket and uh, getting the head resurfaced. And then, let's just say we just threw them all in. This is where we're at. And <laughs> Needless to say, this is where we're at. That's where we're at. But here's the old motor. Yeah, so that's going to go back as a core. That's going back. There's the old motor. And that's where we're at. Well, but you can see there's a bunch of all the parts. We'll exhaust come system intakes i got most of these parts all cleaned up and ready to go i got a new mid pipe um what else i'm also here in the near future going to a bigger turbo yep tim's so, felt the need for speed here lately if we got he said this is going to be a trail slash sand machine. Yeah, this is just And a this trail is quickly rig. turned into a sand machine. <laughs> it's an everything machine. You want uh -huh. to go ahead and show them the rest too while you're at it? Sure. I've started to cut away the bed. Yep. So I'm still not done, but this is a start. It's opened up. I'm going to get rid of some braces, figure out a few other things, but I want the motor back in there. So we're going to do, I'm basically, I'm, we're going to time lapse this going back together and we'll cut in from time to time and then we'll give you full details of the motor here shortly but until then just have a good time
we get a nice uh, DNM Racing split tank there. So what that does is it splits your heat exchanger and your intercooler for your turbo, and, or gets gets it away from your engine coolant. So what's happening right now is when you've got that big plastic tank in here, basically everything is shared. Everything is you know all in one, and when the engine gets hot, then your heat exchanger and your intercooler for your turbo also gets hot, and then you get heat soaked. So what this does is it splits it up to a coolant. Engine coolant is on one side, and uh, uh, turbo coolant, you know, intercooler and heat exchanger is on another tank. And in the back by your sway bar, you have a little electric pump that's there from the factory, and that will cir circulate the intercooler side of the coolant, and your water pump will then still circulate. Yeah. So, so we've already put this one in. Uh, we're also going to be doing one of these on my machine, so we'll do an in-depth install at correct. that point. Yeah, we're going to do one of these and a timing chain tensioner on his machine. Let's go show him that real quick. Go ahead. Let's go. So these things are kind of known for failing. So the other one is the factory assisted. ones. That is, yeah, the factory ones are known for failing. So, so the factory one is, I think, spring assisted with like a oil assist, and uh, they just get weak, and they can allow your timing chain tensioner, which is right here. So basically, that tensioner is pushing on this plastic guide, pushing against and taking the slack out of your timing chain. And if that goes bad, then you get slack. And you can jump you time. Jump time in. Yep, you're gonna start messing things up. So in your motor. that is a common node problem. So that yeah. is nice peace of mind to have there. Be honest with you, we probably should have done those years ago. Probably, but I mean, why not? Start yeah, today? you live and learn. Why not start today? <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start putting this sucker back together. All right, guys. So you guys didn't see it, but I got the motor assembled. I believe everything is back on it, ready to go back in the machine. Here's the machine. Got the wires all pulled this way. <clears throat> Gonna go ahead and jack it up and take the passenger shock off and it'll just hang out of the way and we'll set the motor in from the passenger side. I'm gonna time lapse the motor going in and I'm gonna cut in here and there. But I got Bronco over here with some help. We got Cody over here with some help. We got Jeremy over here with help. So All right, guys, so as you see, the motor is in, um, like starter wires are hooked up, um, starting to get things routed in place. Got the front of the motor aligned. We temporarily have the motor and trans aligned. We're getting ready to put the clutch cover on. But uh, as you see, it's starting to come along. But uh, that's where we're at. We're cleaning up a couple other parts. And uh, yeah. guys so we got trans aligned um, got the turbo going on now I had to do a little I had to align the turbo into the exhaust housing because I swapped housings um, but yeah we're going everything's looking good I mean there ain't a whole lot more I got to tighten up the exhaust manifold and then uh, I'm gonna start getting my heater hoses on and uh, Start button up some more wiring. All this wiring is kind of laying here until uh, the intake manifold gets in here, but that's where we're at. I'm 
on my end. That end too, yeah, there. Tim is less of a man without a mullet. Just saying. Okay. You got your end? Basically everything on the firewall side of the machine is done. Um, I've just been goofing off here and there, just getting a little bit of stuff. It's been hot. Just trying to get everything buttoned, not forget anything. Torque everything down, needs to be torqued. On this side, I still got, I still got a intake put on. I got a crank sensor to hook up. I got these coolant lines here and I got an exhaust um, throughout the whole machine. I still have the shock undone there. Um, sway bar links are disconnected so that I could drop this down get the shock out of my way so that I can get it in there but just wanted to let update you guys on a few things let you know you know this is not an install video this is basically just showing you what we got going on here and what has occurred in the last couple of weeks things have kind of got crazy and things are just ramping up from here but DNM racing uh, Doug over there man he answers his phone every time you call him um, any questions you got you call him he'll put you in the right direction and uh, I mean he I called him Thursday and the next Monday I had a motor shipped and on its way so I mean granted sometimes they're probably more busier than others and it might take longer but customer service is spot on so if you guys are looking for a motor um, go check them out they got they got a website they got you know stock rebuilds they got stage two which includes different stuff stage three includes different stuff and stage four includes different stuff and uh they've been in the business for 25 years so i just like uh, telling people about companies that have good products and uh so far i'd have to give this one a big thumbs up and uh yeah so throughout this evening and tomorrow i'll button this thing up and it'll get fired up you guys will see that, but I'm just time lapsing here and there. So we got the intake in, got the intercooler hoses hooked up, got the wires routed where they need to go, got the injectors in. Um, I still got charge pipes to do and intake pipe to do. Um, kind of just trying to go through and comb through everything and make sure everything is right one time. And uh, it's kind of why I'm just taking my time. But that's where we're at. Let's see what else we got. B bands are tight on the intake. Uh, the coolant hoses are hooked up, all routed nicely. Um, I think I'm, I think I'm ready to start getting charge pipes and intake pipes on. I'll leave the exhaust and the back bracket here in the Trinity for last. But I still have my limit straps off, my sway bar links disconnected. Um, obviously, I still have clutches off. There's still some parts in this box here, which is like. A couple pieces of plastic, an air filter, belt. Yeah, that'll be last minute stuff. Yeah, it's all the clutches don't take no time or nothing, but that's hook up enough. your coolant lines. Got to get done yet. Um, burp the are, coolant system. Coolant lines are done. They do have to be burped. Yep. Um, but you got to do the intercooler ones, right? Intercooler lines. They're done. Oh, you already put them on. Yeah, they're okay. I put those on. Um, I'm just trying to reroute everything, so now that I'm getting rid of the bed area, I'm trying to make it look nicer with the bed being wide open and whatnot. And I really want to get rid of them two cross braces. If you look in there, you can see those. Yeah. These two braces. If I could get rid of, if I could get rid of them, I'm, I'm going to. But I might wait until a bigger turbo setup's figured out and exactly ironed out before we go doing that. Okay. Because I'd really like them uh, MSD coils and that uh, billet valve cover. So then we really get rid of them. It's only money, man. It is. <laughs> we just let, let, let's just light it on fire. Because 
that's where we're at. We're just lighting it on fire, so we might as well just keep you, lighting by it. By now, on you fire. could add a long travel. But then again, who knows how much money you'd have into that? <laughs> Listen, I thought Jeeps were expensive. Yeah, no, Jeeps are. This is four years ago. Yeah, Jeep, Jeeps, are, Jeeps are child's play, man, when it comes to these things. Hey, man, whatever. We're having a good time doing yep. it. Yep. And uh, this is what we like doing. So we're going to keep doing it. Everyone might think we're crazy for spending all this money and doing all this crazy stuff, but. It's what we do. I'm not. I'm not normally home every weekend. So every weekend I'm gone doing something, and my machine's been broke for three weeks now. So I've been home for three weeks, and I'm ready to leave. There you go. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and continue time lapse, and uh, Will's getting ready to leave here. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep cutting in like I was, and uh, he just come by, give me a hand, try to help me get a few things buttoned up. Uh, but that's where we're at. You want to show my last $40 I got here? That's all I got left. <laughs> all I got left. Hey, we're going to start a GoFundMe for Tim here. Just, he needs more money for his radio. I might as well just grab one of the 20s and just light it on fire right now. Because <laughs> that's what I'm doing. It's going to be gone. So, that's where we're at. Got the old butt motor boxed up in there. Real nice. Uh, that's a core that's going to get sent back. Um, probably this week. Um, obviously, here's still everything else. Charge pipe. New exhaust. I don't know that I showed that. I did not show that. So this is a new mid pipe coming from the turbo. Yeah, yeah he's got the bung welded a, up. Yeah, it's so basically a stocker. Can monitor AFRs. Cut brackets off. Got the bung welded in there. Got the uh, original oxygen sensor in there as well. Trying to just make it cleaner. Sorry about the noise. The wife bought me some fans for Father's Day. Kids are playing, but um, 
I got an airlift uh, system that uh, basically sucks all the air out of the system. And then when you flip a valve, it fills the voids with coolant. It sucks all the coolant in. Um, I'll show you, it's right here. This is what it is. And this is what it looks like. And uh, this is like my second or third time using it on a side-by-side. -side. I normally only use it on cars where with you normally have to bleed a vehicle. Um, on any vehicle I've ever used this on, it sucks all the air out. You flip the valve, it fills all the voids with coolant. And I've never had an air pocket in a vehicle after using one of those. So this is only my second or third time using one of these on a side-by-side. -side. Crossing my fingers. Everything got right up to temp. All the hoses felt, uh, you know, hot or getting warm like they're supposed to. Um, and temperature is holding. There's no fluctuating. So, if worst case worst worst comes to worst, I will take and uh, lift the machine up, pull the bleeder screw, and go from there. But I did it on the coolant side and the intercooler side. So, as of right now, it's been up to temperature. It ran for I don't know. 10 minutes, shut off, I'm letting it cool back down, hopefully if it has any air it'll let the air bubbles out and then uh, I'll fire it back up and do the same thing. But I'm telling you, it started second crank and I don't really have anybody here to hold the camera and record. Um, so that's why I went ahead and did it off camera but it fired right up second crank, first crank was two or three seconds and that's normally how it is on E85 anyways it's a good six or seven revolutions I stop then the next second or third revolution after that fires right up and it did motor sounds great um, like I said man I just tried to button everything up make it look nice super happy um, I've bought plenty of new and remanufactured things in the past and they still like potentially have ways to get dirt on them or dirt in them this motor came sealed up clean spotless if you go and follow them and uh, check out dnm racing you'll see their clean room i mean their stuff is spotless where they're building these Im engines is crazy from what i gather they have one guy breaking motors down and cleaning all the parts they got another guy building the motors and they got another guy doing another thing they got a couple guys i don't know exactly how many four or five people over there but they got their dedicated jobs and they're good at what they do. So, if you're looking for a motor, check them out. DNM Racing. doing today tim and some dirt drags dirt drags and, uh, local technically player. they're supposed to be mud drags but <laughs> wet years, dirt drags we'll call three it. years ago it was dust yeah it looks a little bit better this time yep but we got uh quite a few machines out here bronco's out here daniel's out here my brother jeremy's out here your mom my mom the kids machine Tail out here. daniel's uh, tailings out here daniel's so out here with his talent. got the two-seater the, yep the stock two-seater here bone stock so we're gonna go out here we're gonna play around the girls are gonna be entered in the powder puff class and then it, i hope we get to uh get an na class going and a turbo class because if not uh, i feel bad for all these na people that have entered 